here's what the absolute value does. The absolute value of a number is a way to measure the distance that a number is from zero. So the absolute value is really just the distance a number is from zero. So basically, it's a measurement. It's just measuring where a digit's place is in relation to zero. So for instance, let's say that, let's say I'm standing in the middle of this room, okay? And I have my tape measure with me. You guys have used a tape measure before, right? Mm -hmm. So I stand right here, I hope, I hope so. And I measure to the left, I measure this way. About how much am I get, gonna get between me and that wall? In feet. About 14 feet. Eight, maybe probably a little more than eight. I'd say, yeah, maybe 12, 14 feet or something. Does this sound about right to you? So on my tape measure, I'm going to go, I'm going to measure out. It's a measure, it's just say 12 feet. I'm not sure if you're okay with that. Now, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to measure to that wall. I'm going to get about 15 feet. Tell me something. Is my tape measure going to say negative 15 feet? Even though I'm going completely the opposite direction, is it going to no. give me a negative? No. No, because distances, there's that measurement, it's always giving you a positive number, isn't it? It's just telling you how far away from something you are. If you're talking about Fresno in relation to LA, you don't say, oh, well, um, LA is negative 320 miles away. Does that make sense to you? No. Even if you talk about Sacramento first, you go, well, Sacramento's 220 and LA's uh, negative 320 miles away. That really doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Because you're not going to go negative 320 miles. We talked about distances always in positive, <coughs> even if two things are completely opposite. That's what absolute value does. It measures how far a digit is away from zero. So what that means for us is a couple things. Number one, I hope you were listening to that analogy, because that's, that's a really good analogy for absolute value. Number one, is absolute value ever going to be negative? No. If I measure one way, I measure completely the opposite way, am I still going to get a positive? Absolutely. That means absolute value. Since it's a measurement, it's not going to be negative ever. Also, it uses a couple symbols that we need to be, need to be familiar with. It uses these vertical lines that are a little bit longer than like ones. Uh, they, they go hot, hot, taller and shorter, shorter than that. So it uses this. They're like elongated ones without the thing on the bottom. And what this says to you is I want you to find the distance, whatever the number I put in here is, from zero. Let me give you just a for instance here. So if I have two numbers, 5 and negative 3, and I ask you this question, I go, OK, everybody, uh, can you tell me what that is? Here's what the question's asking you. It says, what I want you to do is find out how many steps away, if you will, how many units 5 is away from 0. So the absolute value of 5, this is what says that. It says, how far away is 5 from 0? Can you tell me that? Five. It's just 5. That's right. OK, but how about this one? How many units is negative 3 away from 0? Three. Three. So we're not going to put negative 3? No. no. That's right. It can't. It's, a, it's just a measurement. It's saying this. Start at negative 3, count to 0. How many spaces do you have to move, basically, is what it's saying. So we go, all right, how many spaces do I got to move to get to zero? One, two, three spaces. The absolute value of negative three is therefore three. Nod your head if you're okay with that. Good, all right. So absolute value is never going to give you a negative, uh, even if the number inside your absolute value is a negative. It's just counting the spaces to zero. That's what it's doing. Basically, no matter what, the answer from the inside is going to be positive.
that's, that's basically the idea here. Let's try a few more examples. I want you to do these examples. Uh, don't say them out loud though, let's everyone think about them. They go really quick. I just need to make sure you're getting this down, okay? So I'll put one on the board, we'll do it, we'll cover it and keep going. So here's some basic ones for you. Everybody, absolute value of six is how much? Six. six. Perfect. How about the absolute value of negative eight? Eight. eight. Absolute value of negative 27? Seven. Seven. Absolute value of zero. zero? Zero. Perfect. So in our cases here, we have an absolute value of a number. Doesn't matter what it is, you're going to give me a positive number after the absolute value. All right. Very good. How about this one? What's the absolute value of negative x? X. x. Good. Doesn't even matter what x is, so that's going to happen. How about this one? So, is the negative inside the absolute value? No. Yeah. This is different than all the other ones we've had, isn't it? Here's what this one says to you, Jeff, you're right. This one says, you're going to cover up this negative because it's not in the absolute value. How much is the absolute value of seven? Seven. seven then you make it negative. That's what it's saying. What this says is the opposite of the absolute value of 7. So you find the absolute value of 7, then you take the opposite, or you make it negative after that. Are you clear on that one? So, yeah, I know I just got through telling you absolute value is never negative. Well, that's true if it's inside the absolute value, but that doesn't count for if it's not. Does that make sense? If the negative is inside the absolute value, sure, it's going to be made positive. If the negative is outside, it's, it doesn't count. Does it take into the kind of absolute value? So negative seven, that's our our number. Think on it, don't say it out loud. Think on it for a second. I want everyone to think on this one. We'll talk about two things about this problem in a second, but I want you to think on it. First thing is this, I hope you're listening. Absolute value does not work like parentheses does. Okay, it does not work the same. Does not work, are you listening? Does not work the same. So while you can do this, please pay attention here. I want you to see the difference. Remember we just got done doing this? We said that's positive three. Mm -hmm. That does not work here. This is parentheses, this is absolute value. Absolute value says you've got to take this into account before you even start talking about anything else. You with me on that? So this process doesn't work. What this one says to do, it says, how much is the absolute value of negative 18? 18. And then you're going to? Add the negative. So it's going to be how much? Negative 18. That's exactly right. Did you get negative 18? Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. Okay, so that, this concept works for parentheses. Absolute value are not parentheses. They're different. Way different. Negative absolute value of y is going to be what, everybody? Negative y. Perfect. And even if I have like a variable in here, negative absolute value of negative b is going to give you? Negative, negative b. Very good, very good. Negative b. Did you get negative b? Okay. Do you have a good understanding of this absolute value concept? How many people do feel okay about that? Good. That's very good. We are done with 2.1. We're going to start our 2.2. And again, this is probably... Up to this point, this is definitely the most important thing that I can teach you. Um, this will be one of the, like the top three. Maybe the top thing I teach you in this class is how to add and subtract integers. I know it sounds like, like seriously, adding, subtracting? This is where people make mistakes. People don't make mistakes on multiplying negatives together. Rarely. People don't make mistakes on dividing them. People make mistakes on order of operations and adding and subtracting integers. That's where you make mistakes. So that's what we're going to spend a lot of time covering. Uh, the first thing we got to talk about 
is what these adding integers look like. I'll give you the rules. We'll call it a day. Uh, next time on Wednesday, we'll practice a lot of these rules. Okay, so let's get the rules down for now, and then I want because I want you to think on it, and then we'll start practicing on Wednesday.